All right, we're going back a lesson just because yesterday I messed up and I did 11.3 before I was supposed to, but that's all right. It's no big deal. It doesn't really last yet. 11.3 didn't really depend on 11.2, so we're fine. So let's take a look at 11.2. What we're going to do is more area stuff, okay, more formulas, but this formula right here is actually very similar to a formula that we uh, have already talked about in that first lesson. Watch this. If I was to... Um, if I was to take this side right here, actually, let's make this a little bit smaller because I don't know if I have enough room to make it that big. Okay, watch this. What if I just took this side right here and then I extended it up, 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 up. Mm, maybe that'll be good enough. Oops, see, they use it. Let's try that one more time. Can't lift. There we go. All right, and then I extended this. Watch. And I extended this all the way up till it hits and let's make this hit right there okay it's close enough so what did I start with what was that thing that I first started with yeah it was a polygon right but what special kind of polygon wasn't a parallelogram because remember a parallelogram both pairs of opposite sides are equal JL what is it it's a trapezoid exactly right so we started off with a trapezoid look what I did to the trapezoid I took one side I extended it up I took the other side the non-parallel side okay because if I extended the parallel sides they would never meet each other would they because that's what parallel is all about. Parallel means they're never going to meet each other. But look at this side. If I extend this non-parallel side up and this non-parallel side up, it forms a what? A triangle, right? So what I think about, I kind of think of a trapezoid as kind of like a triangle, but you kind of whopped off the top of it. Do you see that? All right, so we had that triangle there, but I just cut it like this. I didn't just cut it any old way. I made sure that cut was parallel to the bottom. Right? And then I've got a nice trapezoid right here. So the reason I showed you that is just to get you to think about the similarities between a trapezoid and a what? A triangle. Okay. Well, they both start with T. All right? So that's a start, right? They even have TR, right? For trapezoid and triangle. But they also have a similarity in the, um, in the equation for the area, for the formula for area of a trapezoid. Let's talk about this first of all. Look at the two parallel sides. If this is a trapezoid, this side and this side must be parallel to each other. Do you remember the name? We had a, we had a chapter on this. So it's been a while, but do you remember the names that we gave the two parallel sides? I'll give you a hint. We call the non-parallel sides the legs of the trapezoid. We call them the base. That's right. So I'll call this the base of the trapezoid, and I'll call this the base of the trapezoid. Now, are the bases exactly the same in length? No, they're not. So I'm just... I'm just not going to call this base and this base because they're not exactly the same. Let's call this base 1 and let's call this base 2. You okay with that so far? All right, no big deal, right? Because they're different lengths. So I'll call one base 1, the other one base 2 because they're not exactly the same. All right, even though they are both considered the bases. Now, what was the area of a triangle? Well, it's not just the base times the height of a triangle. It's one half the base times the height. But look at this. This is a trapezoid, it's not a triangle. It doesn't just have one base. A triangle just has one base. But this right here is a trapezoid. How many bases does it have? It's got two. So what do you think, maybe just off the top of your head, what do you think we might do to those two bases? Okay, that's a good thought. Maybe square it, but we're just going to do what? We're just going to add them together. Okay, so I'm going to take base one, add it to base two, and then multiply it by the height. That's really, really close to the area of a triangle, isn't it? Because what was the area of a triangle? It was just one half the base times the height. But a trapezoid has more than one base. It's got two bases. So what do we just do with the two bases? Just add them up. Okay? That's really the only difference between the area of a triangle and the area of a trapezoid. So yeah, it's another formula to remember. But is it, if you remember, oh, T trapezoid, T triangle, yeah, they're kind of similar. Oh, so the area of both of them are kind of similar to each other as well. Does that make any sense? Okay, so that's what we have right here. It's one half. You add up the two bases and multiply by the height. Now, have I really shown the height in this picture? No, I haven't. Let's scooch this down here like this. Where do you think the height would be? Okay, yeah, from base perpendicular to base, okay? So go f anywhere. You could go anywhere on base, too. It doesn't have to start right here, but a lot of times in the picture, they'll draw it right here, okay? And um, you got to go perpendicular to the other base. So that right there, as long as it's perpendicular, that right there would be the height 
of that trapezoid. All right, it's very similar to what we talked about before, right? Kind of like the air, the height of a um, a parallelogram, right? It goes from one parallel side to the other, and it's perpendicular. So, f so here's my two bases. There's my height. So if I know those numbers, then I can find the area. Make sense? All right. Let's see if we have a good. Uh, Um, so what's the area of a trapezoid? I should write write that down. I didn't write it down. I should have. Here it is. Area of a trapezoid. O I D. Okay, that's the area of a trapezoid. Very close to the area of a triangle, isn't it? Instead of one half the base times the height, it's one half both bases added together. Right, the sum of the bases times the height. Pretty simple stuff, don't you think? Yeah, I think so, too. Let's do an example, and we'll uh, see how to do this. All right, we're going to we're gonna just look at the same basic trapezoid shape right here. Let's say that this is 6.4. Let's say, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong example. Let me look at another one. Let's do this one. Let's say that that's 16. Sorry, I'm dying here. That's 6, and that's 16. How's that? You guys watching, right? No, you're not. So let's do this. And they tell you one other thing. I'll just do this in another color. They put it as a dotted line, but I'll just use another color to represent this. And this is 12. Now look, it doesn't get any easier than this right here. Okay, This is about as simple, straightforward as you could possibly get on an area of a trapezoid problem. So you do recognize that it is a trapezoid. They tell you that it's a trapezoid, so that means these two are parallel to each other. And what is the formula? We just talked about it. It's one half, both bases, right, times. added together, times the height. Now look, we know everything that's in this formula, don't we, to find the area. So I know the two bases. So let's put a half first. Let's add up to two bases. 6 plus 16, plus 16 times 12. Good. Now look, when I say show your work, this is what I'm talking about. I realize that you might just be able to put all that stuff in your calculator all in one shot. I understand that. Okay, but this is showing your work. It's just putting it into a formula. And it's a good idea at first, when you're first learning these formulas, I would jot it down. I would write it down every single time on my homework. The reason for that, I mean, you know, some people will write all the formulas at the top of the paper and just look back on that every time. But if you write it down for every single problem that you do, it's going to make you memorize these formulas. Okay? And that's what I would do. It's a little extra work to write it down every single time, but it only takes a couple seconds, and it's going to make you memorize this formula. All right? So I would write it down every time, plug the numbers in, and then let's see what we get. So we got one half. What is that? 22. Is that right? Yeah. And then 12. And this is half of 22 is 11, and that's 132. Is that right? You should put divide. you should put parentheses around this. Mr. Henry, I did times I did first. That's fine, but but look, I did this without a calculator. Can you do twenty two times twelve in your head? No, I did do that. I know, but but then you'd have to do all that stuff off the side, right? Or use a calculator and then take half of that. But watch how easy this was. Half of twenty two right, is 11, you all know that, and 11 times 12, that's one of your multiplication tables too, isn't it? All right, so you should know that, so it's 132. Make sense? All right, try, listen, broaden your minds a little bit, and don't always, don't always rely on a calculator all the time. If there's ways, now look, I'm not the smartest person in the world, and I don't know all the tricks. There's a lot of people that know all these little tricks, and they can do stuff in their head. I'm really not that great at doing stuff in my head, um, but there are times when you should try. I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, half 22, that's 11. Oh, 11 times 12, that's 132. Boom, I'm done. No calculator needed. No scratch paper off the side. None of that, okay? Just trying to show you little ways to do this. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Let's do another example. It, uh, just slightly a little tougher. All right, here's your problem. This is a little bit different because this time they tell you the area. And they ask for x. x is basically our what? Our height, okay? If you want to, if you feel more comfortable, we could just call it H for height. It's up to you. It doesn't make any difference. 
So, how do we do that? How do you find the height? Well, I know how to find the area. I'm not sure about how to find the height. Well, let's still plug it into that same formula. Let's write the formula down. And I would do this every single time. If I were you, and this is new to you, and you haven't learned this formula before, um, I would write it down every single time. So, area is one-half, the two bases added up, times the height. Everybody with me so far? Now, let's plug in stuff that we know. Do we know the A? Yeah, it's 78 equals 1 half. And then do we know the two bases? Like point four and 13. Yeah, let's add those up in our head. What's 13 plus 6? 19.4, right? So again, when you can do stuff in your head, I would do it. Times H, which we don't know, do we? All right, now we could, we could do this a couple ways. I don't know. What would you rather do here? Can't you just divide the 19.4, right? You did the first time. Yeah, and you got to divide the half, but you could take half of 19.4. There's a couple ways you could do this, right? What's the easiest way? I don't know. I think this might be the easiest way. So go 19.4. Uh, you could go times a half or just divided by 2, right? And that's 9.7. So that right there is 9.7. So let's write it out. 78 equals 9.7 times h. I think this might be the easiest way for you to figure it out. Everybody with me so far? Okay. And then you just divide by 9.7. That's right. So take this and divide by 9.7. Divide this by 9.7. And let's see what we get. So we get 78 divided by 9.7. And that gives you 8.04. We'll just say it's 8, right? Because the 4 doesn't round it up. So we'll just say it's approximately 8 or 8.0. And that would be your answer right there, wouldn't it? Okay? Because you're just trying to find the height. We just found it. Do you want us to always round it to the nearest tenth? Yeah, if it doesn't say, I, I say a good rule of thumb would be round it to the nearest tenth. Okay? Just um, normally on these problems, it tells you already to round it to the nearest tenth. But if they don't say... I mean, I would probably round it to the nearest tenth, and that's rounded to the nearest tenth. And some people say, well, why don't you just put 8? What's the big difference? There's no difference. 8.0, just 8. Yeah, but how do I know how I got to this 8? This could have been like an 8.4, couldn't it? Because 8.4 rounds to 8. This tells me something. This tells me, oh, it wasn't an 8.4. It was an 8.0 something, right? And that number didn't round it up. So that tells you a little bit more specifically about this number compared to this. All right? That may not make a difference to you. You may not care so much about that, but there you go. If you take science, um, ninth grade science, you should learn about significant digits. I think I've asked that question before, and you guys are like, I've never heard of that in my life. Significant digits. Nobody's heard of that? Okay. There's a whole there's whole lessons on significant digits. Uh, when you get into, like, I don't know, chemistry, physics, and things like that, You'll probably talk a lot more about significant digits. All right. Ask your science teacher. Ask your science teacher. They'll tell you about that. All right. Let's do another uh, figure. We did trapezoids. Watch this one. All right. Look at this thing. What's that thing look like? Especially if I turn it the other way. Looks like a kite, doesn't it? That's exactly what it is. And that's what they call it. In geometry, they actually call that thing a kite. I think we've talked about this before. When we did quadrilaterals, we talked about the kite. Remember that... Um, these two opposite angles are equal to each other. These two opposite angles are not equal to each other. Um, we say these two sides are equal and these two sides right here are equal. We say that the, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Yeah, we've talked about that before, right? When we did that, par when we did that uh, quadrilateral chapter. Yeah. But what we're concerned about today is how to find the area of the kite. So this is, this is the area, area of a kite. All right. It's actually pretty easy. Now, these two diagonals are important. The reason that I have this kite drawn with the diagonals in there is because um, we're going to use it. So watch. A lot of times they'll label it like this. They, don't, they just won't put the number like right here. Because if they put it here, I don't know if I'm talking about from here all the way to here or from here to this point. Does that make sense? So a lot of times what they'll do is this. Let's do this in a different color. Sometimes they'll do this. They'll draw... I'll even draw a straight line. We'll draw a line like this, and then a line like that, and then they'll do this, and they'll, oops, and then they'll do this. And a lot of times they'll put arrows on the ends. Oops. Right? 
You see what that does? That just told you the length of this middle diagonal right here, this longer one, this horizontal one. Everybody see that? So if they said, well, let's put a number in. We'll call it D for diagonal. But there's how many diagonals here? A lot. A lot? How many? There's two. That's not a lot. There's two diagonals. So instead of just calling it D for diagonal, since there's two of them, guess what we're going to call this? D1. That's right. Just what, like we called the other thing, right? Base 1 and base 2. We'll call this D1. Now, what is what is that? Let's um, do this. Let's ungroup this. And let's make this line the same color so you can see how they go together. Do you see that? That yellow one is the same as this. So this is how they're going to show you a lot of times. They're going to give you a little mark here, a little mark here. They'll give you that value. They'll, they'll make that a number probably for the most part. And that's, um, and that's the length of that line right there. Does that make sense? So it's important that you understand the picture and how they show you which line is what. So that yellow one is D1. Well, how do you think we're going to show the other one? All right, we'll call it D2, R2D2. All right, so um, we'll do it about right here. That looks about right, and then about right here, and then there, and there. All right, so if this is D1, what do you think we're going to call this? D2, all right? Usually put arrows there. And let's change the color of that one. All right, everybody see that? So that blue one is D2. That yellow one is D1. Well, watch how easy this formula is. This formula is really nice and easy. Let's put this formula in white. Here we go. Ready? The area of a kite is equal to 1 half. Right? Make sure you don't forget the 1 half. On the... Um, we already had a test on this in the uh, honors class, and I can't tell you how many people <coughs> forgot to put one half here. They got every, they did everything they were supposed to. They forgot the formula, and they forgot that it was a one half in front. So watch, it's one half d one d two. That's it. Really simple. Kind of like the same thing except the height. Kind of. Yeah. Y y exactly right. I hadn't, I hadn't even thought of that. That's a good point. Look, that yellow one's kind of like your base, isn't it? And that blue one's kind of like your height. It's not exactly, but it kind of is, isn't it? It goes from the top to the bottom, right? And this spreads all the way across from here to here. So you're absolutely right. It's kind of like the base and the height. So the D1 is kind of like your base, and the D2 is kind of like your height, isn't it? And then you take half of it. That's the area of a triangle. So, yeah, it, it is a good, it's a good way to look at it. Exactly right. I never thought about that before, so that's good. It's D1 times D2. Do you put parentheses You don't have to can. I mean, if they were regular numbers, I probably would. If that was like a 3 and a 7 or something like that, I'd probably put parentheses around them. But that's our formula right there. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Just got to remember it. It's not that hard. You just have to remember it. Every time you have one of these area of a kite problems, what I would do if I were you is write down the formula. We have one more figure to talk about. And the nice thing about this next one, it's the same exact formula as this. So even though they're two different figures, one's a kite and one's, we'll talk about in a second, the area is exactly the same. So let me uh, grab one of those figures, we'll put it down, and the area is going to be the same. So you know what the area is already. All right, this thing right here is a rhombus. Now, how do I know it's a rhombus if I know what? All four sides are equal. If all four sides are equal, then it's a rhombus. Let's draw a couple diagonals in here. Here's a diagonal here and a diagonal here. What do we know about the diagonals of a rhombus? Well, they are perpendicular to each other. We know that, okay? And um, they're not equal to each other. They do bisect each other because it's a parallelogram. So there's a bunch of stuff that we know about a rhombus um, that we're not necessarily going to do right here. So we're going to figure out what the area of a rhombus is. Now, I already gave you, I already told you. I didn't give you a hint. I flat out told you what the area was. It's the exact same thing as what? Kite. As the area of the kite. Okay, so the area of a rhombus is the exact same thing. So it's one half, D1, D2. Everybody see that? Now, um, it's not quite so easy to represent that here, but I'll try. Watch. Do you see this whole thing right there? We'll call that D1. Make sense? The other one would be D2. And it really doesn't matter which one's which, does it? No. All right, so the yellow one is D1, right? And then 
let's change colors. Let's go with this pink color. It shows up pretty good. Alright. Ooh, that was probably not the best place to put that, but that's okay. That's D2. Alright. Oops. And let's change the color of that to pink. There we go. Alright. I probably made that a little too messy right there, but the yellow one is D1, and the pink one is D2. And if you know those two, multiply them together, take half of it, and then you're good to go. You got the area. That's how you find the area. Make sense? Yeah. Now, this is, a rhombus is also a parallelogram, isn't it? So you could also go base times height. You remember that? So you could say the area of this is the base times the height. But why is this helpful sometimes? Because sometimes you don't know the base and you don't know the height, but you do know the diagonals. So look, you really wouldn't be able to use this, would you? If you, if you um, only knew the diagonals. So if you only know the diagonals, you got another formula to use. Make sense? Because this is the area of a parallelogram, isn't it? A rhombus is a parallelogram, so you could use this if I knew the base and if I knew the height. But if you don't, and you only know the diagonals, then you would use this one. So it all depends on what information they give you, on which of these formulas you would use for this. Now, kite is not a parallelogram, so you can't just go base times height on a kite because it's not a parallelogram. But a rhombus is a parallelogram. What's that? Yes, because the rhombus is a parallelogram. Okay, But the problem is, if they don't tell you the base and they don't tell you the height and there's no way to figure that out, then you can't use it, right? But if they tell you both diagonals, then you can use it. So it all depends on what they give you and what you're trying to find and uh, it depends on what formula you're going to use. Are we going to have a test on this? We'll probably have a quiz. I don't think we'll have a full-blown oh, test on it. Okay. Is that, you want a test? Yes. yes. You do? Um, what's today, Wednesday? We might be able to. I'll probably give you one quiz. and I, I think we could probably work in a test. I think we can work in a test. I would like to have another test. So it would be a good idea if we did. All right, I think we covered everything. I think we did. So let me give you a worksheet. Shh, guys. I'm going to give you a worksheet. This worksheet is 11-2, and we're going to go over that. Um, I think tomorrow we get out of here, what, at 10 after? 11 after? Um, I don't really have a whole lot of time to go over that worksheet today. So um, maybe I'll read off the answers to you. Then we'll go over both worksheets tomorrow, okay, 11-2 and 11-3. All right, that's it.